everyone, and welcome to another episode of Freelance Life. Um, you're in the, the middle of our Adapting to Change series. Um, and today we're going to be chatting about uh, evolving client expectations, how you can stay aligned. So, um, Shay, welcome, um, as always. Uh, do you want to kick us off? And um, I don't know if you have maybe a, a story or an anecdote that you can relate to the specific, the, the specific top, uh, topic. topic. Um, how do you stay aligned with with client expectations? Because they do evolve all the time. For sure. So I think, I mean, something major that we're noticing, I think, in the world in general is at what point do we slow down? Everything seems to speed up and pick up. And it's something we've spoken about in the past, like the more conveniences and the more tools we have, the more we try stuff into our day and try fit everything in and more and faster and deadlines become sooner. And uh, it, it's very difficult to step off that roller coaster. And trust me, your clients are on that high speed train. So keeping up is definitely, um, you know, expectations are higher in terms of speed and what you can deliver. And AI has only accelerated that. So whereas mm. before, um, let's say we we're talking about interviewing someone, you would have to sit, do the interview, transcribe that interview, then write it into an article now. The transcription's already done for you. Uh, you can create a first draft in chat GPT. If you want to see how that's done, do check out our previous episode. Um, so already, that's a huge time saving you've made, but the client's expectation has evolved accordingly. So mm. I think speed is one of them um, and keeping up with it. At the same time, you have to have your boundaries in place so that the expectations aren't that you're going to deliver in one hour. But yeah. it's a delicate balance because you also have to remain relevant and servicing their need for speed. Yeah. Um, I think something so, else. Yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to no, go no, on no, another please. tangent, so go ahead. I was going to go, um, I was, I don't know what I was going to say. I was just going to come to me as it was coming out of my mouth. So please go ahead. <laughs> uh, and I think other, other trends we kind of seeing in the marketplace, there definitely are, in fact, there are more freelancers out there which is amazing, but it also means that there's more competition. So you have to be more tuned into what are you doing to stand out. Um, for me, uh, it's just offering an excellent service. So, you know, always delivering on time, which sounds like a basic, but isn't necessarily the experience that um, a lot of clients have with freelancers. Um, delivering, mm. a, delivering a clean first draft, um, all those kind of basics, if you do those well already, that's such a huge competitive differentiator. So it doesn't, doesn't mean you have to go out and explore some um, off-the-wall USP or unique selling point. Actually, if you just do your job really well, um, you'll stand out above the competition. Um, yeah. And I think another thing that's changing is people are seeing, because there are more of us and post-COVID, more people stepping into more consultancy, freelance roles, et cetera. I feel like the industry is becoming more professional and the expectations align with that. So it's no longer like, oh, I'll just get my cousin Bob to put the website together and I'll pay him as little as possible. People are actually waking up and realizing that freelancers are a huge part of the workforce and a very beneficial part uh, for those fractional services and highly specialized skills. So I think mm. professionalism is another client expectation that I've noticed. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've built up uh, and I'm very protective of my reputation. I have a reputation for delivering really good work on time. Uh, I go above and beyond. Um, you know, it's very much don't over promise and under deliver. Do it the mm -hmm. other way around, you know, under promise yes. and over deliver. Um, so it is putting in that extra mile, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I agree with you that uh, tech and AI has definitely driven expectations. And when tools like ChatGPT and, um, and Claude came out, it was all this, uh, oh, you know, it's going to create so much additional time for people. And, you know, they can, uh, I'm still waiting for all this time I'm supposed to have gained because all I've gained is more deadlines. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. um, yeah, it's, I, th I think from, from that perspective, it's all about putting a, a, a structure in place to make sure that you don't overwork. Because um, in one of our previous episodes, we were talking about burnout and that kind of thing. And I, I struggled with burnout at the beginning of this year. And it was because I just was taking on more and more work because of client expectations. 
Um, mm. So, uh, it, yeah, uh, when things tend to, ex uh, you know, grow really quickly, um, whatever makes it explode, that explosion can destroy that thing as well. And I think that uh, we as freelancers need to be very careful of how fast AI and other tools have made us to, to do that work um, and uh, make sure that we're, we're looking after ourselves as well. Um, th there's that kind of client expectation management, which has always been a bit of a, um, a tough one when it comes to being a freelancer. I mean, we don't necessarily have a big uh, kind of agency or law firm behind us so that if we get mistreated by the client, um, we, we've got a fallback. We have to do that stuff ourselves. So I, I, for me, it becomes down to a lot of that kind of work-life balance to protect myself from being taken advantage of by increasing client demands. And I think it's something we've spoken about in the past too. Um, for me, the easiest way to do that is have clear communication from the beginning. So to say, you can expect a reply to your emails within 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever it is. Or And then, mm. you know, if you do it sooner than that, that's, that's a bonus. Um, but just setting those kind of expectations from the beginning so that, yeah, you don't end up just as we both have experienced getting to a point where you're not even enjoying what you're doing anymore. And you're actually not delivering the best work for your clients because you've overcommitted yourself. Mm, yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about kind of consistently uh, delivering over and above? Because are we not setting a precedent? And uh, maybe this is going in, uh, off in a little bit of a different tangent now, but um, you know, you can expect a reply in 24 to 48 hours, but then I will consistently deliver in two hours. You are then setting a precedent. So when you do hit your 48 hour because you're just really snowed under or you needed to take a, a day for yourself or whatever the story is, um, you've, you've not really managed that client expectation really well right off the bat. Very true. And you know, I like to keep them guessing. Um, <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely not winning at that. But it is sometimes a conscious decision to not reply to an email straight away. And you know, sometimes you just want to like clear that inbox out your head and and get that email sent off so you don't have to worry about it later. But sometimes I have to. Okay, this emails came come in. Mark it as unread. Close your inbox. Carry on with what you were doing. And get back to it when you can give it your full attention and, you know, play mean to keep mm. keen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah work in progress. Uh, what kind of communica uh, communication strategies have you got in place to keep pace with client expectations? Like, uh, I know some people like to, you know, talking about deadlines. If you can expect a reply in 24. So, do you have like an auto reply on your on your emails that automatically sends out so it reminds the client of that you know that deadline that you kind of it's an easier way to manage it or um are they constantly like on your whatsapp because yeah like im tools are great uh, if you need information but they're not so great when your client is chasing you for like where the hell's my stuff um even if it's be you know before deadline so what what kind of strategy do you keep uh, to to kind of keep in line with client expectations? So I don't have an auto response because I am a bit, I must admit, all over the place with my email responses. And right now with a newborn, you know, those 2 a.m., it's quite a <laughs> nice way to kind of get something done when you're on a 2 a.m. wake up. So, but with regards to IM tools, I'm quite protective over my time. I don't keep them open. So I will only open an IM tool for a client when I'm working when I've set the time aside to work on that client um, and I'll close it as soon as I've dealt with whatever it is I need to deal with so that I can do the actual work. Um, mm. So I, I, for no client do I have a sort of always on connectivity um, because that's not why I'm a freelancer. Um, I'm not an employee. I don't want to be on call 24 seven. And I want you to know that I have other clients and my own boundaries too. So I am very mm. protective over I am. And I prefer not to have clients on WhatsApp. Sometimes it just is easier depending on the kind of work that you're doing. But um, I'm actually trying to think for the most part, I actually don't, I don't have any clients on WhatsApp. So I kind of keep that to, yeah. 
personal mm. personal life and yeah just which trying is to be which is weird because you have the blue tick thing off and you're a business account um which is uh for me i i can't turn the blue ticks off because my mother would have a heart attack and think <laughs> i died in a fiery crash or something if i don't read my whatsapp but uh. um yeah, that is actually one strategy if you do have clients on WhatsApp is to turn off the blue tick. Um, so oh, that my they gosh. Even see. with friends, you know, I found the <laughs> – really, that blue tick is so I – I think I haven't had the blue tick for, for years now, and it's a game changer. You know, sometimes you just don't want to reply. You don't want people yeah. to think that you're rude or ignoring them, but you actually don't have time to reply or you don't want to reply. And why should you? That's, you know – yeah, but it's easier. Yeah. It's easier when they don't know that you, that you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I don't actually have any communication strategies. I suppose um, the communication strategy that I that I employ the most is is actually just leveraging the uh, the relationship. I, I invest a lot of time into building solid relationships with my clients, and uh, I know that you know most of them we get along really well, and so my strategy is like. Not that I need to call in favors, but like sometimes something comes up and you're like, shit, I really need to have an extra 24 hours mm. for this or I can only deal with your thing next week. And most of them are very understanding because mm. we've got that relationship. So my strategy is just actually build really good relationships with your client. Don't see them as a cash cow. Um, see them as a long-term investment. Um, so yeah, uh, that, mm. that would be my strategy. And it's in the same way, it's also a bit of give and take. So they might, they know that they have a good relationship with you. So if they say, look, I really need this. I know this is coming in last minute. There's, I've got this really great opportunity. I need this by tomorrow. You'll do that for them because mm. you've got that relationship um, where you actually want to help each other out. Exactly. I mean, if, especially if they're a repeat client, you know that they're mm. going to be around. Um, and uh, there is a lot of give and take as with any relationship. Um, it's just to get the relationship to that point. I would never do that for a like a brand new client. I've been burned like that before where I've delivered work for somebody that seemed okay and then they don't pay, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, invest in the relationship. We, I'm only going to give you that specific level of service and that sort of thing when there is uh, reciprocity and mm. um, when there is an established relationship. Yeah, um, but yeah, wise. investing in relationship is definitely a great communication strategy. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um, we've kind of run out of time for this particular episode. We were going to maybe chat about adapting your service offerings to meet new clients' demands. But uh, the next episode that, we're, uh, that we've got scheduled is all about developing your skill set. So we'll probably cover a lot of that in that episode. So if that's what you've been waiting around for, um, check us out in the next There's episode. There's your cliffhanger, folks. See you in the next <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Shay. See you around. Thank you.